Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting functional equation with trigonometry. We have f of cosine x equals cosine of 17x, and we're supposed to find f of sine x in terms of x. Now, to be able to solve this problem, I'll be presenting three methods, even though some of the methods will be incomplete. But anyways, let's start with the first one. So when we're solving something like this, we look at the first equation, the one that's given. Can I find f of x from here, right? Because if I can find it, then I can definitely replace x with pretty much anything I want, including sine x. So we're going to focus on the formula for cosine of 17x. Is there a formula for cosine 17x? Yes, if you kind of use Wolfram Alpha, it's going to give you this formula, which is beautiful, right? And then from here, you can basically write everything in terms of sine and cosine. But you only want cosine because this is cosine of 17x and you don't want to have any sine in it. So whenever you have a sine like this, you can definitely replace it with something like 1 minus cosine squared. And then everything will be in terms of cosine. And when you do that, you're going to get something gigantic, something that looks like this, f of cosine x equals cosine of 17x. And that is going to look like this, cosine of x to the 17th power, cosine of x to the 17th power. And then you're going to have minus 136 cosine x to the 15th power multiplied by 1 minus cosine squared, so on and so forth. There's going to be a lot of terms. At the end, you can go ahead and replace cosine x with something else. How about t? Then you're going to get a function of t like f of t equals t to the 17 minus 136 t to the 15th multiplied by 1 minus t squared plus 2380 t to the power of 13, so on and so forth. There's going to be a lot of terms, a lot of terms. This is going to be crazy, right? It's going to be super duper hectic. And then at the end, you can basically replace t with sine x, and that should give you f of sine x, hopefully in terms of sine x, because you got rid of all the uh, cosines, right? Again, that doesn't look like a very good idea, does it? Anyways, that's the first method. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. For the second method, we're going to do the following. Again, we have f of cosine x equals cosine of 17x, and we're supposed to find f of sine x. So let's go ahead and reverse the process. Write this as cosine of 17x equals f of cosine of x. Now here's what I want to do. I want to replace x with something so that I can change the name of the function. And that can be easily done if you consider the cofunction or should I say complementary angles. So if you go ahead and replace x with pi over 2 minus x on both sides, it's going to work, right? So we're going to get something like this, cosine of 17 times pi over 2 minus x equals f of cosine of pi over 2 minus x. But what is cosine of pi over 2 minus x? Pi over 2 minus x and x are complementary angles because they add up to pi over 2, which is 90 degrees. Therefore, cosine of pi over 2 minus x is going to be sine x, and that's what we wanted to find, f of sine x. But what about the left-hand side? Let's go ahead and simplify it. First distribute, you'll get cosine of 17 pi over 2 minus x equals f of sine x. And then if you go ahead and work on the left-hand side a little bit more, you can actually simplify this because it contains multiples of 2 pi, and that's actually 8 pi plus pi over 2 minus x, right? And then we have to cosine it. And that's going to be f of sine x. Now notice that 8 pi is not important. We can get rid of it and write this as cosine of pi over 2 minus x equals f of sine x. Let's go ahead and switch sides and write this first. So f of sine x, which is what we were looking for, can basically be written as, based on this, sine of x. Why? Because again, pi over 2 minus x and x are complementary angles, therefore, this identity holds. Make sense? We were looking for f of sine x, and actually, we 
found it. But I think we ignored something. Let me go back. Yes, we forgot to distribute the 17. So this should be a 17x. Let's go ahead and fix that real quick. Minus 17x. Therefore, we should have a minus 17x here as well. Right? And then, of course, this should also be minus 17x. And then this should be 17x as well. In other words, f of sine x will be sine of 17x, which is basically parallel to what we originally had, right? Because we were given f of cosine x is, this was given f of cosine x is cosine of 17x, and now this is what is implied. Make sense? So, yes, you can do that. Obviously, there is another way to write cosine 17x, which is, you know, the complex numbers, or you can use uh, the even multiples of x. But again, this is going to be a lot of formulas to go through, right? So that's going to be super duper painful. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at a third approach. All right. So for the third approach, again, the problem is f of cosine x is given as cosine of 17x. And you're supposed to evaluate f of sine x. We already know the answer, but let's just pretend we don't and see if we can find it a little differently. So this time, since I want to find f of something, I should be getting an expression for the function f, right? So let's go ahead and do this. Let's replace cosine x with something. How about something like z. z doesn't have to be complex in this case. So cosine x equals z. And just ignoring the you know details about the domain and range, we can safely say that arc cosine of z is x, right? That's the inverse function. You can also write it as cosine inverse with the negative one power. But a lot of times people like this better. So we can basically replace x with this, right, on both sides because that's going to give us f of z. So let's just write z directly. On the right hand side, we're going to replace x with arc cosine of z, right? So this is what f of z is. And we're trying to find f of sine x, which means it would make sense if we replace z with sine x this time, right? Because we can do it. So f of sine x is going to be cosine of 17 times arc cosine z, which is sine x, right? Okay, here's the million dollar question. What is arc cosine of sine x? You can kind of think of it this way. Arc cosine of sine x, you can actually set it equal to something like t, and then cosine both sides, that should give you cosine, because the arc cosine and cosine are going to cancel out, when you cosine both sides, you're going to get something like sine x equals cosine t. And obviously, at this point, you can replace sine x with cosine of pi over 2 minus x, right? Which means you can kind of plug it in, but that will be the same as sine x, so on and so forth. Hopefully, this method will be well, will work for you. But this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment. Like and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.